Hello, this is J.R. Chadwick. This is a video response to Venom Fang X's most recent butchering of rational thought. Okay, we have the overdone introduction to make it look like he knows what he's talking about. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, keep it going. But as it slowly, gradually reproduced, it doesn't need some, um, some of the same things that our eyes need. And so it stopped there. And so it stopped there. And so it stopped there. You said that the octopus randomly mutated to where it is today, where it's quite comfortable, and now it doesn't need to mutate any further. Well, you know, the whole thing about random mutation is it doesn't really care um, about if it's comfortable or not, because it, it's random. The octopus did not randomly mutate to how it is today. Random mutations did and do occur, but natural selection is not random. Natural selection occurs when a life form has inheritable traits which become favorable. In other words, more suited to surviving in their current environment. If the environment changes, other traits may become favorable. It is not about being comfortable. Octopi may appear completely different millions of years from now. It has even been hypothesized that octopi have the potential of evolving into sentient life forms. You know, when I think of random mutation, I get this idea from, uh, you know, Resident Evil? Who? Yeah, Resident Evil. This is what I think of. How quaint. Your idea of mutations comes from a video game. You sure are proving how knowledgeable you are. Most genetic in mutations are inert and have no bearing on whether or not the life form can survive. Others are harmful or detrimental, and the life form is unable to propagate effectively or dies right out. Occasionally, one will appear that is beneficial. That's random mutation. Now, obviously it's happening a lot quicker than uh, it would happen in nature. But um, that would pretty much be it. Just a whole bunch of nonsense. Random mutation, right? You know, eyeballs coming out of your neck and limbs coming out of your forehead. Just really, really weird. That's random mutation. Actually, those types of mutations called polycyphaly or polymelia occur either when the body axis forks along the torso or when one of a pair of conjoined twins only partially forms. They are not necessarily genetic. People with these disorders can have normal children. Why is it that uh, random mutation always seems to make really intelligent decisions? Straw man argument. You know, just... You know, th this, is, this is what you want to tell me, Goat. You want to tell me that, and you use this word. And so it stopped there. And so it stopped there. He says that the, uh, he says that the octopus evolved and randomly mutated until it was comfortable in its environment, then it stopped. That's the word, stopped. And so it stopped there. So, <laughs> why, why did it stop? Why did it stop? Maybe it's because it didn't randomly mutate to where it is today, and the reason it stopped is because it was never going in the first place. Conclusion without understanding and a straw man argument. The, the mutations you speak of. You know, why is it that life, which you claim randomly mutated to where it is today, why is it that life randomly mutated from something like a single cell and then mutated all the way to stuff like this? And like this? But for the octopus, it stopped. And for everything that exists contemporarily, it stopped. Straw man argument, you do not understand natural selection. Natural selection is not random. Could it be that the actual uh, story of what's going on here is that cats and elephants and octopi were actually designed and that the random mutation you speak of is actually adaptation 
and natural selection, which, fit, which fits the creation model far better than it fits the evolution model. Fits the creation model? It seems like the creation model's goalpost can be moved whenever it gets scored against. Allow me to explain that. I believe that God made animals with the ability to adapt and mutate intelligently. Intelligent mutation. Assumption without evidence, conclusion without understanding, and a straw man argument. There's something you don't hear every day. So let me explain intelligent mutation. Is it possible, and you and I were discussing this, is it possible that God designed certain kinds of fish with the ability to lose their eyeballs, or lose the ability to use their eyeballs, in order to exist and thrive in places where it doesn't need its eyeballs? I'm inclined to say, yeah, that would make sense. Then that would be intelligent mutation. Conclusion without evidence. Creatures that rely on sight in an environment with little or no light would tend to have a harder time surviving than those who are less dependent on sight. The discovery of cave fish without eyes or pigment fit the existing model of evolution. And it would still remain a fish. I believe in natural selection. I believe in mutation. I believe in adaptation. And yet, you do not seem to understand them. I just don't think they can do what you say they do, and I don't think they did what you say they did. I believe that God gave life the ability to adapt and mutate and naturally select, but that does not mean a fish came from a non-fish, and it doesn't mean a fish will become something that's not a fish. Speciization has indeed been observed. You apparently were too cowardly and dishonest to follow Thunderfoot's advice to type observed instances of speciation to Google. When two populations are not able to interbreed and create fertile offspring, they are no longer the same species. Most of the observed instances of are insects or plants things that produce many generations over a relatively short period of time. Now you probably are thinking, but they started as flowers and they ended as flowers, or they started as insects and they ended as insects. That's just a perfect example of creationist goal post moving. And so it stopped there. So, mutation, adaptation, natural selection fit the creation model, and they fit it better because those things are quite intelligent, and it's a good thing that life can do that. For example, you know, evolutionists like to say, well, bacteria mutates and, uh, you know, becomes immune to antibiotics. They say, there, that's evolution. No, that just shows that God made bacteria with the ability to adapt. That shows good design feature. And it's still bacteria. And that does not prove it came from something that wasn't a bacteria. That doesn't mean it's becoming something that's not a bacteria. It's still bacteria. So, yeah, evolution doesn't fit the evidence. Where, where's the evolution? Where, where's the octopus transcending where it's comfortable and becoming something completely nuts and crazy? And so it stopped there. That, that is what we would expect if evolution was true. It wouldn't have any regard for what was comfortable. And so it stopped there. Conclusion without evidence, straw man, and goalpost moving. I'm going to have to split this video in half. The second part will be up shortly. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is J.R. Chadwell.